In this video, I'll be synthesizing copper phthalocyanine, an intense blue copper-containing organic compound with a very interesting structure. For this reaction, you'll need 4 grams of thalamide. I made this according to the video by ChemPlayer. Next, you'll need 1.62 grams of urea, 1.16 grams of copper 2 chloride dihydrate, and 0.03 grams of ammonium molybdate as a catalyst. In the past, other people have had success substituting boric acid for the ammonium molybdate catalyst. To begin, the prilled urea is crushed up in a mortar and pestle. Next, the other components are added one at a time and mixed in thoroughly. Unfortunately, because it was very humid in my lab that day, the mixture became a very thick and sticky paste, which was very hard to scrape off of the mortar. I managed to get most of the paste into a small ceramic crucible, which I then placed in a sand bath on my old kitchen hot plate. I decided to use this hot plate because it heats up faster than the ceramic topped one that I normally use. As the temperature of the mixture reaches 100 degrees Celsius, water begins to boil off. That red light is just the laser from my infrared thermometer. As you can see, underneath the crust, the mixture is becoming dark and molten. The temperature at this time is almost 200 degrees Celsius. At this point, a lot of the thalamide is subliming, so I decided to put a lid on the crucible to contain it. The crucible with the lid is heated at above 200 degrees Celsius for another half hour. After being allowed to cool, the crucible is opened. A small amount of sublime thalamide crystals are removed from the top, and underneath there's a dark blue, glassy, melted mixture. Rather than risk staining my mortar and pestle blue for eternity, I decide to crush up the solid inside of the crucible using a glass rod instead. Once I manage to get most of the material out of the crucible, this is what I'm left with. Set up an apparatus for vacuum filtration. Even if you have a fritted funnel like I do, put down a layer of filter paper. Wash the product three times using distilled water. Then wash twice with about 10 milliliters of dilute sodium hydroxide solution. Next, do two washes with 15% hydrochloric acid. The color of the filtrate in this wash is light green, indicating that the acid is dissolving some excess copper too. Rinse once more with distilled water, and then discard the filtrate. With the filter flask now empty, keep washing the product with acetone until the filtrate is colorless. It's hard to see with this camera angle, but the first several acetone washes yield a yellow filtrate. Once all the acetone evaporates, the product is ready to weigh and store. The final yield was 0.86 grams of copper thalocyanine. This represents a 22% yield. While that doesn't sound very good, it's about average for this synthesis. In the future, I plan on making more thalocyanine compounds based on other transition metals, so stay tuned.